How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. All right, Vincent, we can go ahead. We can go ahead and get started if you would like. Okay. Fantastic. Let's get going then. Um, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, it's wonderful to have you joining us from all corners of the globe. Lots of nationalities here today, which is fantastic. It's a wonderful reflection of um, our diversity at UBIS. Uh, my name is Vincent. I'm the Director of Partnership Development here at, at the University. Um, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to today's student and faculty roundtable event. Um, I'd like to start by congratulating you all on your application submissions, your enrollment. This is really the first step of what will be a very exciting journey with the UBIS family, and we are all very happy to have you on board. Today's session is a great opportunity for you to get to know um, the university more, the programs, but more importantly, actually speak um, directly with our fantastic faculty. Um, and also our wonderful students who we have here today to share their experiences with you and of course give you an opportunity to answer, ask some questions and get some answers as well. So on that note, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Antonina Santalova, who is the director of the UBIS Research Institute, um, who will be discussing the pillars of the UBIS DBA program. So Dr. Santalova, over to you. Vincent, thank you very much. That's my in enormous pleasure to welcome everybody on this on this call. Uh, it's such a pleasure to see all these beautiful faces, wonderful people. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I'm the director of the DBA program as well as the Research Institute at UBIS. And I would be delighted to tell you everything about how we can meet your expectations, how we actually can exceed your expectations and make you win. Um, this is sometimes a quite difficult and challenging journey of DBA, okay, doctoral, uh, doctoral studies. So that's my enormous pleasure. Uh, I think maybe before we go to four pillars of the DBA program, and those are the four pillars are ones which actually make our program different from other DBA programs of other universities. Maybe we go first to the faculty members who are on this call. Vincent, what do you think? <clears throat> So if you show me the next slide, so let yeah. us... If you want to, I've got, I need to talk about a few reasons to love UBIS, so I can go ahead with that and then we can move on to faculty. Okay, so, brilliant. Tell us about why we should love UBIS and then I okay. show you the people who I believe you're going to love. Fantastic. So um, in a few minutes, you'll be speaking with our current students who I'm sure will share their reasons to love UBIS, but let me give you a few that really make us a unique university. Um, so the first aspect is our links with the corporate world across many different fields from the business sector, finance, international relations, uh, sustainability, NGOs, oil and gas, airlines, the, the list goes on. And this is very important for you as a student to have these um, direct links with, with the industry um, for your future career prospects. We have over 17 partner universities. Um, in 14 countries that also offer the UBIS programs. Uh, this gives students like yourselves the opportunities to do dual degrees, study abroad opportunities, travel whilst you study. Um, and this is also in line with our mission statement, which is really to become a truly global university providing um, education to as many students as possible. So we have partner universities in the UK, Vietnam, Maldives, um, Azerbaijan, the UAE, just to name a few. Um, I think the list is growing almost on a weekly basis, which is, which is fantastic. We are a global university, but we also consider ourselves and pride ourselves in being a boutique-style university. So our classes are very boutique-sized, um, up to 20 students per classroom. Um, we believe that this gives you as the student the opportunity to interact directly with the faculty um, if you need any extra support, um, they're always on hand to, to give you that, that support, but also with your classmates. Um, so you'll see your students in the online classroom, on campus as well. They're from all different parts of the world. They come with fantastic experience, fantastic resumes, backgrounds, careers. Um, and this is, this is what the learning experience is all about, is learning from each other, learning from different cultures. Um, doing business is different culture by culture. So the classroom is a great place to learn together. Um, so we really focus on our small learning environments. Um, then we have an emphasis on practical experience as well. Um, as, a, as a future leader, you really need to have that hands-on expertise um, 
whilst you're studying within the industry, working on real life business case studies as well. Um, you will meet our fantastic faculty today. They have some really diverse backgrounds, fantastic <clears throat> careers, um, and they really share their knowledge and their know-how with you in the classroom at all times. Um, someone mentioned the United Nations when we were talking about the different nationalities here. Um, we have very strong network and partnerships with the United Nations. So our campus in Geneva, Switzerland is actually a five minutes walk from the UN, from the Red Cross. Um, we're in the diplomatic heart of Geneva, so uh, international relations for business. Um, we have some excellent connections as well. Alumni, very important to have a strong alumni network for your career opportunities, for your networking opportunities. So we have over 1,300 students and alumni from 30 different nationalities. Um, again, all over the world, fantastic careers and um, You'll be meeting some of our students shortly as well. Last but not least, you have the hop on and hop off opportunity between our online programs and our on ground campus programs. Um, we know you're all busy working professionals. Some of you have families, you're traveling. Um, so we really want to give you that added flexibility that if you do want to spend time on campus, you can switch between your, your semesters from online. Uh, to on ground. We have some very exciting international campuses in Barcelona, Spain, and in Geneva, Switzerland. So if you are visiting those countries and want to spend some time there, then please let our admissions team know. Right, next slide, please. I'll introduce us to today's agenda. So we will introduce the faculty and um, we will then have um, an introduction to some of our DBA students, so your future potential classmates. And then um, Dr. Santalova will discuss pillars in between all of this. <laughs> and we'll then open up for um, frequently asked questions, both for the faculty, but also for the class, for your classmates, current students. We'll try and cover as many questions as possible, but of course, if your question is not answered towards the end of the presentation, drop it in the chat unmute your mic, raise your hand, and we'll get that answer for you. And then we'll be discussing the next steps that you need to take to get fully enrolled and ready for the start of the program. So on that note, back to you. To meet Lovely, the Vincent, thank you very much. I have a suggestion. What if we all keep our mics off, and then if we do not speak, of course, and then that should provide some better quality of the sound, okay? Because uh, that we are all online and it's very important that we all hear well. Can you hear me well? Yes. Ahmed, can you hear me well? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, yes. excellent. Najat? Yes, yes, I can hear good. you, yes. So if you switch off your mics, that would be good. I see that Shane has already switched off his mic. Thank you, thank you, Shane. Good to see you. you right, too. okay, again, that's an enormous pleasure of mine to introduce my team. And in my team, so the first picture you see, that's mine. My, my name is Dr. Antonina Santalova. Everybody calls me Tony. I absolutely love this name, so please do call me Tony. Um, I got my PhD from the University of Oxford, uh, UK. <clears throat> Before that, I had the three masters uh, also completed, one in, in the University of Oxford. So my area of expertise is social policy. So I'm particularly interested in education and healthcare and how business initiatives and business techniques are actually employed in the public sector nowadays uh, around across the borders and around the world. Uh, let me introduce the uh, <clears throat> members of my team. So on today's call, we have the honor uh, of having Dr. Shanti Kontos. Dr. Shanti is the provost of UBIS University. Uh, Dr. Shanti, if you say something, then you will be larger, I believe. Everybody can would be able to see you. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. How are Lovely. you? Lovely. Hello, greetings, hello. Greetings from the United States and by way of India. Uh, lovely to meet everybody. Actually, Dr. Kompos, that's a very important remark. I'm joining you from Oxford, Oxford, UK. So you see, UK, United States of America. Uh, the other colleague of mine is Dr. Stuart Culley. Uh, Stuart, if you say something, then we will be able to see you as well. Yep. Hi, Antonina and Shanti. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for the opportunity to um, come on the call. Um, my name is Stuart Cooley. Like um, uh, Antoniva, 
Antonina. Uh, I'm actually based in, in Oxford in the United Kingdom. Unlike Antonina, I actually did my PhD at the University of Cambridge. And my first academic job was as a director of studies at the University of Oxford. So we, we, we see each other on a frequent basis. I think the last time I saw you was yesterday. So, uh, so uh, it's a small world, but it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, it's uh, a great opportunity to be involved in the DBA. Um, just to give you some background on on my relationship with UBIS. So I was one of the people that was responsible for helping to redesign the DBA in February of uh, 2021, and then went on to be the director of the DBA uh, and worked very closely with the team to help build the DBA into what it is today, and then passed it on to uh, um, Antonina's capable, capable hands, and she's, she's taken it to the next level. I am still engaged uh, as faculty and uh, professor that teaches on the, the DBA, and also more importantly, I'm here to Today to talk about a little addition that we have, which is very exciting in the sense that uh, the senior management team at UBIS and I have come together to create a, a program in Oxford. Sure. I'm yep. sorry for interrupting. If you don't mind, let me introduce the whole team and sure. then we shall open the jams of the program. Okay? Yeah, I'll, I'll so I'm just saying that's, that's why I'm here today. <laughs> that would be lovely. Yes, no, absolutely. So I took the banner and I'm trying to hold it high from Stuart Cooley, and that's my great <laughs> honor. And you might have heard that usually people who graduated from Oxford and graduated from Cambridge universities are rivals. But actually, Stuart and I, we are breaking all stereotypes and we are very good cl and close friends. So you see, so that's, that's the positive thing. We're all friends. We're all a family at the UBIS University. So the other person I would like to introduce is Dr. Ken Goldsmith. Kenneth, if you can say something. Yeah. Say hello, please. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, <laughs> I don't have an Oxford connection, except I visited it a long time ago. That's the extent of that. Uh, my DBA is in leadership. And for the new students on the call here, I just want to mention that in the last year of teaching uh, various classes in the program, I found about a third of the students have some leadership uh, component to their uh, their proposal to, to what their topic is. So uh, I found that very interesting and very uh, useful uh, that uh, my study done a few years ago uh, is very applicable to what a lot of students in the program are doing. I also have a law degree. And for those of you who've taken my class or, or, or know me, uh, you'll also see that uh, a lot of what we do in, in how we teach law has a lot of parallels in how we teach how to do research. Uh, so uh, when you get me in class for the student, new students here, uh, you'll see that I'll make a lot of cross references. Um, I teach 701, the first course in the sequence, and I've also done the research courses 707, 8, and 9. Look forward to meeting all of you. And thank you, Professor Goldsmith. And those of us who have you, Professor, in the classroom, as our leader, as our professor, really lucky. I have extremely positive reviews. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Goldsmith. So next one in the row, as you can see the pictures presented in this slide, is a Stella Kastuk. Stella, I don't know whether, whether you are on this uh, phone call. So Stella is Geneva office manager. So you have heard about the two marvelous campuses we have, one in Barcelona, Spain, and the other is in Geneva, uh, Switzerland. So Stella is definitely the spirit, the soul, the heart, the core, and the manager of our Geneva campus. So those of you who decided to come and you know study for a while, let us say, in Geneva, uh, you will definitely meet Stella, and you will have an opportunity to kind of get the joy of communicating and working with this uh, remarkable person. So the next uh, person in this line is Semen, my dear friend and colleague from Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City. Um, Semen suggests that we call him Matt. So Matt, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> Hi. Uh, hello. Hello. Hello, guys. Um, the name is uh, Tam An, uh, but you can call me Matt, uh, just for, just, it's easier. <laughs> right, so um, uh, I have been um, um, a partner, uh, a staff member, and a faculty uh, for UBIS uh, since, nine, uh, since 2012, um, um, helping UBIS to build the executive mode for the DBA program in uh, Vietnam, in Southeast Asia. 
um, I have been lucky enough to be to have to to work with students on um, various topics uh, of their DBA dissertation. Um, and I'm, I am an entrepreneur, uh, a technology enthusiast, um, and a, a teacher. I love talking to students, um, and that's uh, that's. And I've been here for ten years, so that tells uh, tells us a lot. Uh, I love it every minute of it. Oh, Matt, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, the question that actually bothers me always, Matt, is the question when do you sleep? <laughs> because of the yeah. time differences and, you know, because of these time zones we work across. Being in Vietnam, Matt joins the meetings, I don't know, like midnight, 1 a.m. at Ho Chi Minh City. So he's extremely hardworking. So, Matt, we all admire. We all admire yeah. how you manage, how you manage all these meetings yes. and, you know, never paying attention yeah. to any yeah. any time difference. So yeah. that's, that's amazing. Thank you, Matt. Uh, so yeah. you've met Matt and the final picture in this slide is the picture of Mindy Hamilton. Uh, Mindy is the Dean of Faculty at UBS University. She's a new person, uh, but she's wonderful. So Mindy, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you, Dr. Santalova. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Dean Hamilton. Um, I'm pleased to be here today. And it's nice to see so many of you who joined us. Um, I'm in the US. I have a master's degree and a law degree um, from New York. And very pleased to meet all of you. Can't wait to get to know you more and to assist you. Brilliant, Mindy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, okay, so um, if you don't mind, if you just give us the second, the next slide, Raphael. So now the dearest, I would say the dearest guests here are our students, of course. Whenever I'm asked what makes me kind of wake up in the morning, or first of all, what made me leave Oxford University and start to work, you know, for you, this university, I say, guess what, students? Students make me wake up, Actually, sometimes they wake me up with their phone calls, you know, with their WhatsApp messages. I appreciate that. But mostly that actually I can, you know, enjoy and have the pleasure of meeting remarkable people coming from all over the world, uh, the experts in their industries, in their fields. And you're going to meet some of them now. So the first in line is a Shelter Lotsu. Shelter, are you with us? Hi, doctor. Oh, yeah. hi, Shelter. It's always a pleasure <laughs> to hear your voice. Shelter, say a couple of words where you're joining us from, I know where, but anyway. And uh, yes, and Shelter, all these people you can see now, right? They are DBA candidates at the different stages of the, year of, of the program, but they are all, and you will see, you know, uh, how, how wonderful they are. So Shelter, a couple of words. Thank you, uh, Dr. Santalova. I'm actually joining you from Accra, Ghana, in Africa. Uh, so uh, as uh, said by Dr. Santalova, we are a very um, uh, internationally, uh, globally uh, connected uh, university. I joined uh, <clears throat> UBS, I mean, my second year, getting towards my third year. Hopefully in 2024, I'll be uh, one of uh, the doctors uh, in business administration. Uh, my background, I'm a civil engineer, uh, but then I also did a uh, master's in highway engineering and also did master's in uh, uh, global management in uh, Southall University. So I studied in China, I studied in Ghana, I studied, part of my studies was in the US and also in the UK and now currently studying at UBS. Uh, I want to use the opportunity to welcome all the new students. Uh, it was just the same experience for me a uh, uh, year and a half ago. When I was entering UBS, I didn't know what I was going to get. But now I can tell you, I'm so confident. You see the way I'm speaking. I'm speaking more confident than I used to do because I've got a lot of knowledge impacted to me. I want to thank all the faculties in the uh, in UBS, uh, Dr. Santolova. Um, I'm just so excited to see uh, uh, Stuart Kiuli, who actually introduced me to uh, corporate social responsibility, which is my direction for um, my research. Um, for lack of time, I won't say a lot, but I thank all of you. I, I, I welcome all of you. Uh, you uh, DBA is um, a very important uh, uh, you know, study, and I am very sure all of you are up to the task and you'll be able to make it to the point where you get your hand, your degree, your degree handed to you in, in, in the course of time. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Shelter. You will have a chance. I hope you help us to answer the questions from the audience, right? So thank you, Shelter. Shane. 
Shane Capazorio, please, Shane, can you hear me? Good morning. Yeah, can you hear me again? Hello. Yes, yes. we can, Shane. Hello, Dr. Santalova. Good morning. Should I say good day to everybody? Um, my name is Shane Capazorio. I hope you're all well today on this fine Friday. Um, I am calling in from New Orleans in, in the US at the moment, but uh, from South Africa originally, living in the US for the last seven or eight years. Um, Good to meet you all, and I know you're on a very exciting journey at the moment. So, uh, a little bit about myself. My my background is after being in medicine, went into pure sciences, uh, biochem, chem, micro, and then I got into business and ended up doing an MBA after leaving South Africa in in the UK and uh, a master's in business strategy in Edinburgh. I think I got to the next point where inevitably the DBA was just felt like the next step, but pondered on that for a little while as I searched for the right institute. Um, so I guess I was not in, in a, a much different position to you all that long ago. And um, I guess where I am spoiled for choice in terms of which DBA or MBA to go into, there's just so many institutions. How do you make that final selection? How do you know that you've gone the right way? That was always my fear. So when I came across Ubus and start interacting with some of the people on this call, I was delighted to finally get to this point. And when I look back, um, it's been a phenomenal and exciting journey and one that I'm excited for you having gone through it myself. So um, I discussed a lot of DBA options with them. It, it was a process of leaving no, no stone unturned as I had lots and lots of questions as is natural to have. Um, but you, you will find that this university it, being a boutique university and this focus that they are on people, it's not lip service. They they certainly personify the support. Um, you're talking and dealing with the most esteemed, you know, colleagues and professors and doctors from institutions around the world that are teaching you and lecturing you and creating this space for you to grow. Um, it's been a phenomenal journey in a very short amount of time, and I'm excited on your behalf because I have absolutely no regret and fully endorse and support. Um, this institution. I'm very very proud to be part of it, and the students and the scholars and the and the colleagues I have in my class, it is a phenomenal environment where we all have grown by virtue of the diversity and the people and the support. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a great journey and, and one that I hope you take the next step on and, and join us soon. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. By the way, the journey is not over yet. Far from that, right? We are all mm -hmm. in the anticipation of your research project, Shane. Yeah. I remember your presentation about South Africa and I'm sure that your research would be not less and definitely even more insightful too. Yeah. Thank you. Keep up, that would be great. Okay, let me break uh, the, the sequence and this is a slide and ask our wonderful ladies to introduce themselves. May I ask Noor Atwi? Noor, that's lovely to see you. Thank you for joining. Yes, of course. Hi, Dr. Tony. Hi, everyone from all over. Um, so I won't be long. I know there's a Q&A session later on, so I'll be ready to answer whatever your questions. But just as an intro, uh, I'm Noor. I am Lebanese, a Lebanese citizen, but I currently reside in Cairo, Egypt. Uh, I work as the economic diplomat at the, at the Lebanese embassy here. I've joined the DBA program almost a year ago. I've gone a good far so far i've joined also uh, a couple of uh, uh programs or short programs whether in geneva and next on strasbourg hopefully later on so i'm here to talk about whatever you want uh, maybe in the next uh, session yeah brilliant Noor. thank you very much may I ask jennifer jennifer go ahead um, so hi everyone um it's a pleasure to see all of you here so basically for me um you this has has been it you know um like um shelton and my other colleagues mentioned we were here a few years ago and i have actually very different testimonies about you we could get to share that later on but essentially i'm in i'm in international trade i'm basically promoting trade between the uk and ghana so i've had experience working with global teams and all that and um we look forward to having you all on board. It is the university to go for. I mean, don't even look, because I did look, okay? And once I, I picked UBIS, it's been what I envisioned it will be. They will actually make you um, get your doctorate degree. So you should go for it. Thanks. Brilliant, Jennifer. Thank you very much. Oscar. Oscar Nobrega, are you with us? Yes, indeed. Hello, Lovely. everybody. 
Hi, Thank Oscar. You so yes. you have new you have new mask on today. So that's good. Yes, Oscar. actually, no masks on today. <laughs> and a larger beard, I can see. You know, large, that has been growing indeed. under that's the put, mask. <laughs> that's why I put the mask on to to hide the beard. <laughs> But thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me for this lovely presentation. I remember, like my other, my previous colleagues said before, uh, not long ago, we were all uh, in the same position, trying to make a decision on what institution we wanted to ingress and, and, and start our DBA. I myself, like my previous colleagues, has also an international background. I'm, I'm speaking from Brasilia, DC, Brazil, but I did uh, study in Spain before. I did my master's in mediation in and conflict resolutions in Spain. I did, uh, I have also like Dr. Uh, Goldsmith, I have a degree in law, but I also have a degree in, in international relations. I had some other uh, international courses, but indeed of all institutions um, I dwelled before uh, ingressing in, 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 in this DBA program, uh, by far was one of the most uh, approachable and, and everybody was so nice since the beginning, all the phone calls, Mr. Rafael and, and, and all the other colleagues that, that uh, Christopher as well, and that everybody, all the professors I have here, are Dr. Stooley, Dr. Goldsmith, Dr. Santalova, and some of my colleagues here from my classes as well. It's amazing to have this international uh, experience. And uh, it's been a pleasure. And it's going to be until we finish this journey. We all end this together. And uh, hopefully you all make the right decision and choose OBIS as we did. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. I should say that it's always a pleasure to have you in the class, by the way, Oscar. So, and that's true. Thank you so much. Thank, um, you, so much. thank you. So let it be who goes next. Marita, Marita Casas. <clears throat> she had to go to a meeting, Tony. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, okay, then Ahmed. Ahmed, Bakhti, would you like to introduce yourself? Ahmed? Yes, do you hear me? Yes, yes. now we can okay. hear you. I'm, I'm very sorry, but uh, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm happy that to, to that I, I got invited today. I am um, DBA candidate, and um, I had criteria to be honest before I, I apply for UBIS because I wanted to start my startup. That was my project, and <clears throat> um, to find a place that will lead me during my dissertation because this, this will be like a productive development. And when I get accepted by, by UPIS, um, I already got a professor to be um, very um, super, I mean, it will supervise me during the journey. And I have already established my, my startup here in Geneva. I got accepted uh, in the biggest incubation here in Geneva. My product, it will be launched in next October. And all that, it was based on UBIS. And um, everything is going well till now, so. Oh, well done, Ahmed. Congratulations. <laughs> That's absolutely Thank wonderful. You. There are Thank many you. students who have, who cherish their uh, business ideas. And we just try to help and, you know, yes. equip you with the knowledge in order to push it forward and, you know, to, to the success. So Ahmed, best luck, best of luck. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, and now last not the least is Rafael Salazar. And he's very special. First of all, that all of you know him, right? So that's already a very positive sign. And then second, that he's not only uh, a revenue officer, he's not only the core person in enrollment and not only in it, but also he's a DBA student. So Raf. From this side, please. Not not oh, from <laughs> now. I'm nervous <laughs> after this intro after this introduction. <laughs> but hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today, Rafael Salazar. Uh, I am originally from Venezuela, residing in the United States. I am UBIS Chief Customer Officer, but I'm also a DBA student. I'll be very brief. I we still have a. Uh, a lot in the agenda to cover, but the main reason that I um, joined this program was the quality on the instructors and also the networking opportunities with the students. Every single individual here I had had the opportunity to meet, um, establish a relationship, become friends, and, and, and also network. And uh, the ideas, uh, the discussions, um, the backgrounds have definitely been very inspiring, which is what motivated me to join this program, having been able to engage 
um, in different discussions, point of views, and, and, and again, overall networking with people from all over the world have been a fantastic experience. So welcome again, and I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you. Thanks to Rafael because of his administrative involvement and being a DBA student, you know, he has this very short channel. As soon as he's dissatisfied with whatever in his classroom, he immediately delivers the message to us and we immediately have to correct whatever we had to correct, you know, and to improve and to enhance. So thank you, Rafael. You know how much I respect you. Thank, thank you. you. Rafael, if you don't mind, if you give the second slide now about the four pillars. Yes. So all of you on this call, the prospective, dear prospective students, you might have second uh, pillars. Uh, you might kind of have the question like, what makes all these wonderful people, all these DBA students we currently have, get really interested, uh, excited, and decide to invest into UBIS DBA program, okay? I can say that you all know that that's made of two parts, first of all, right? And the first part that, 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 that is the coursework mostly, and we have eight courses, which we offer. And some of the um, professors that you have already heard who introduced themselves, uh, like uh, Professor Ken Goldsmith, they lead their school courses. But I believe that what makes UBIS DBA program really different is actually the customized dissertation topic advising system. So those of you who had experience with the UK education system, we call this people supervisors. But at UBIS, we decided to employ rather a democratic term. And we, use, uh, we, we call them research advisors. And those are people who actually take you at the second part of your journey. And then they lead you to the successful completion of your research project. And we are extremely uh, keen on finding those are people who you would have a click with, not only at the professional level, but also at the personal level. Because, you know, the period of undertaking your own research can be quite challenging. And it, sometimes it can be quite lonely as well, you know, because you deal with your own research topic, you deal with your own passion, you know, trying to find the solution to the uh, question or problem that bothers you. So you, we, we are kind of very concerned that you feel that you have all support required, not only from the advisors who we are very proud of, but also from your classmates. Because again, I repeat that UBIS is about students and the networking opportunities are absolutely amazing here. So that's exactly what we built in into the second phase of the DBA program when you undertake your own research project. So if you go back Raph, to the slide, then the second pillar I would say that makes us special is the assistance we provide you with publications. Because as you understand, just having a dissertation completed is great. And the best dissertation is the completed one, okay? But we understand that in order to have this academic avenue open for you, in order really to become a thought leader in your industry, it's very important to have a publication under your belt. And that's why our ambitious goal, and we believe that it's your goal as well, and we are going to help you with achieving it, is to get your dissertation published. And that's why, you know, during those three years of the course, we are keen uh, with providing you with um, different seminars and trainings about how to get published, you know, how to brand yourself, you know, how maybe to start the blog first in order to attract attention to your research topic, your research question, and things like that. So I believe that that's the second pillar that makes our program quite special. Then the uh, third one uh, is this uh, um, on-ground immersive experience. And we, you know that uh, UBIS DBA program is 100% online program. And it's very convenient. And I think it's one of the rare positive outcomes of COVID-19 that, you know, we opened the possibilities of online learning for ourselves. However, we are social beings. We appreciate the actual contact, right, with other human beings. And that's why at UBIS, we organize minimum two events uh, per year. Uh, when you have an opportunity to travel to the remarkable places where you can learn about um, businesses, about you know management, leadership experiences in real life, like re that's why we call that immersive experience. That the next event that we offer is the trip 
uh, study tour, rather, to Strasbourg, France. Uh, we are for eight days. With the help of our partners, we organize all these excursions, tours, of visits, you know, to family-run businesses, to the European Parliament, to the non-governmental organizations, and so on and so forth, to give you an opportunity to learn, not only in the online classroom, but also from real life experiences. And we all know that, um, you know, these are type of learning is the most effective and the most efficient one. So that's where we invite and, you know, we really like, like people on this call, for instance, my students, uh, we met in Boston just recently in Geneva, we organized an international conference. And I think it's unforgettable and it's absolutely precious. Ahmed, Noor, right? And I'm looking forward to meeting more of you, you know, in October, because that, that's something you know, that's the most precious thing, I would say. And finally, the fourth pillar that makes the DBA program special. Many of you have been already teaching. You are the teachers, I'm sure, you know, being the managers, being the leaders in your team. You, you teach on the daily basis, not mentioning our children, you know, and the family setting. But in order to be able, with your DR, with the completed uh, doctoral program, to apply for the teaching positions like lectureship, professorship. It's important uh, to have, first of all, the theoretical training in pedagogy and teaching techniques. And that's what we provide as extracurriculum. So it's a bonus. If you're interested, you come to our seminars, you participate in our discussions, uh, you know, you read the materials posted about that, you learn about, learn about the uh, teaching methodology and the, the thought, the philosophical approaches by Vygotsky, by Piaget, and so on and so forth. So that's quite exciting. Also, there are opportunities to teach at UBIS University as well. And for instance, um, I was going to ask Maya, sorry, but she's uh, taking a flight uh, from Geneva to Nigeria. She's flying back home, I believe. So uh, she, she teaches at the master's level. And that's an opportunity to have a theoretical training supported with the actual practical train, practical uh, experience in the classroom, teaching in the classroom. And if you are a hardworking pe person, and you all are hardworking people, I'm sure, if you describe this experience and you, with our help, you submit it to, let us say, the Academy of Higher Education in the UK, you can be qualified to be, you know, that so-called postgraduate certificate. Uh, of teaching and learning at a higher educational establishment. So I believe that that's a new qualification that you can, you know, obtain during the course of the DBA program. I believe that for those of you, particularly uh, those who are interested in teaching and, you know, sees he, himself or herself in the classroom later on at all universities of the world, open for you, so we are here for you to help, you know, to assist you with applying for this qualification. So these are four pillars, I would say, which make our DBA program at UBIS uh, special. And I believe that makes, you know, the program interesting and exciting for the students, current students of the um, UBIS University, you have had the pleasure, uh, you know, to see the introductions of. So uh, now, Time for questions and, the, and answers. So, Raf, if you open the next slide. Brilliant. So, I believe that first we have questions to the faculty members. Yes. So, I can take this, Tony. So, uh, the way uh, we have set out the agenda today, everyone, is uh, we have uh, covering here some of our most frequently asked questions. So, one of the questions that we get the most is the credentials and background of the faculty. So if any of our faculty members would like to cover this question, that will be amazing. Mindy, perhaps you want to cover this one? Yeah, Mindy, I think you should take this one because you are the Dean of Faculty. You need Absolutely. to talk about a, where are you? Okay, go ahead. Absolutely. Um, so our faculty are the best of the best. Let me start with that. Um, their credentials obviously would be DBA, uh, Juris Doctorates, PhDs. These are all considered terminal degrees in their field. Uh, they have all worked in their field and have extensive experience to share with you. Um, we always have good reviews on our faculty, and uh, if you don't know them already, you'll get to know them really well um, because they want to share all of their knowledge and experience with you. 
Thank you, Mindy. Oh, hey, so availability and format of the program. I believe uh, Dr. Antonina had covered this, but let's talk about leadership, availability and format and leadership and networking opportunities. Why don't we talk about those two at once since we're a little bit behind. Um, uh, Dr. Culey, do you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Raf. Um, so uh, one of the things that I, I was mentioning before is that, um, as Dr. Antonina has mentioned, um, a lot of us don't have opportunities to actually spend time together, uh, or largely because much of the kind of online uh, provision, much of the provision of the course is actually online. One of the things that we decided to do, uh, and uh, Antonina has mentioned the uh, opportunities to get together in um, in Strasbourg, but we've also built in another opportunity for the students to come and visit both Antonina and myself in Oxford. So as you know, I was a director of studies in Oxford, and we decided, you know, this would be a really amazing opportunity to do really two things. Use an, ex an, an opportunity for the DBA and the MBA students from, from UBIS to come into Oxford to spend some time in one of the Oxford colleges. And there's 39 colleges within the Oxford system. And what we would do is we would put together a program which is five days in length. And that program is an opportunity for the students to really explore what we believe are the most fundamental issues that business is facing uh, in, in this, this, this time. So for example, we ran the program in the first time in March of 2022. And they, the kind of things that we looked at was industrial relations uh, four point, uh, sorry, IR 4.0, this kind of industrial revolution, if you like, the new one where we're looking at the digitalization of the global economy. Then we looked at what was the, the future of work, you know, how the workplace is going to change. And then we looked at kind of the whole issue of corporate sustainability, you know, in looking, drilling down into things such as ESG, et cetera, and how sustainability is going to fundamentally change the way in which businesses work uh, in, in the future. This was a program, as I said, that we ran in March. I believe that Shelter is on the call. He was one of the UBIS DBA students. Uh, we had four students from DBA that had, uh, from the DBA that attended the program. Maybe if I could uh, ask Shelter just to share his experiences a little bit and, yeah sure and we can we will go over this in this and the q a question so sure. yeah yeah mm -hmm. absolutely okay no no problem all right Th thank you thank you Stuart. i appreciate it so let's talk about academia how can i enter academia uh dr tony would you like to take this one? yes Raphael, i would i would so i have already mentioned right it's a very competitive environment it's not that academia is something well it is where you're everybody i can say is welcome but still you being business people you know from different industries you you understand right that in order to secure your place in this or that field you have to work hard and that's the only way however you can work hard on your own and then that would take much more time of yours and much more money or you can trust a good reliable institution like you did. and that's us here to help you with that how we help as i have already mentioned you know First, uh, that's the publication apart from just the dissertation completed. That's one. So B, we help you building your credentials, building your skills and building your analytical skills, critical thinking skills as well. And in the process of that, you can ask me, so what do you do for that? Like, okay, it's easy to say, have a better you know, set of critical thinking skills. I tell you how every second Sunday, sometimes every Sunday, we uh, organize a Sunday colloquium, so that they, which are already um, have been going on uh, for a while. You can find the recordings of those colloquiums at UBIS YouTube channel with no editing, just purely, you know, as they uh, were recorded, just to get an idea. Because for these colloquiums, usually we invite um, people, yes, speakers, who have remarkable accomplishments, either in the special industry, uh, specific industry, or, uh, you know, in academia, we have the speakers coming from the leading universities, Th thanks to our faculty members coming from the leading universities. You know, we already had speakers from uh, Cambridge University, Oxford University, Imperial College London, um, University of Economics in Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, we had the University uh, in Indonesia, 
also, you, you know, the American universities, Berkeley, California, uh, and others. So that's the place, that's the platform where you can listen to the presentation and not simply admire it, but rather critic, think critically and maybe ask sometimes difficult questions, you know, to these presenters, because that's the safe place for that. And Shelter in the beginning mentioned that now he feels much more confident delivering the presentation, introducing himself. And I sincerely believe that we contributed to that with these events, because it took me at Oxford University, I would say purely two years just to become confident enough, you know, to believe that my way of thinking is worthy, that I can, you know, have the right and legit to ask this or that question. And this question is not going to be a silly one. So it, it is also a skill. So we help with this, with this skills development, you know, through events like that. And also academia is about research. So you get all these courses about research methodology. Uh, you, 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 you become, you, you feel really good about how to design that, you know, how to define the sample, how to choose the people, you know, for these samples, whether you are better and feeling better about qualitative methods or quantitative methods. So that's the space over one year and a half that you have in order to find it out. So that's what we all help you with and provide you with. And finally, you know, this pedagogy training and pedagogy seminars we provide. That's another opportunity because academia is about research and about teaching. And I can see, I can tell you, most of my students, they're marvelous, wonderful teachers. And with a bit of help, with a bit of push from our side, from the university side, they're going to achieve this extra qualification and be wonderful lecturers and wonderful professors later on. So that's, I believe, uh, kind of the uh, recipe <laughs> or recommendation in order to enter academia. Thank you, Dr. Tony. Oh, hey, let's talk about English as a second language. We are... Um... Definitely important one, especially for me being from Venezuela. How can I be successful in writing a dissertation? What resources are available? I believe that Shanti, Shanti, would you Shanti, like to Shanti, would you like that? to take this one? Yes. Hang on. Am I, sorry. I'm not you. muted, right? Very good. No, no, we can hear you. Okay. Um, for one thing, I'm I'm also an ESL uh, mm -hmm. person, even though I've been I'm conversant and fluent in in English, um, and in being English not being my second first language, I have been kind of uh, you know hesitant about my language of communication skills. But one of the things that you have to know is that even though your language may not be English, the fact is there's unlimited resources for somebody who wants to write. And the first thing I would tell you is practice, practice, practice. So every, every class you will take with us, every DBA course that you'll take with us, you keep writing and bring your level of expertise in communicating to a level where you are conversant or fluent in written communication. Second thing is that you have a variety of resources automatically that gives you a lot of uh, information. For example, uh, we have our library resources, LIRN, L-I-R-N, and we have EBSCO where you can go in and look at other people's work and get, get develop your skills of communication. And finally, I would also suggest that you, your faculty members, not just finally, the third one, faculty members are one of your primary resources. All of us are very fluent in English and we'll be able to help you bring your level of communication up to the, to the where you are, where you are um, communicating on a level of a doctoral research. Uh, authority, fellow. Finally, you have so much of software available. Even now, even though I am also a doctorate, uh, doctorate person, I've also done my research. I've done a lot of publishing and I've also done a lot of work in terms of accreditation. I still have a very small thing that I have in my computer, which is Grammarly. And believe it or not, it's a silly little, uh, it's a silly little software. I turn it on whenever I write because even now, sometimes, I do mix up certain things and I can actually use that software to automatically correct it. Sometimes I correct the software, but that's not that, that's not important. Point is that there is so much available out there as resources that can help you, even though your language is not, first language is not English. So never let that stop you from getting where you are, where, where you wanna go, okay? So this is critical. Use every resource that Dubis gives you, including human resources, including your faculty, 
to make sure that you get this your your research and your unique viewpoint across to 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 the world because that's what we're working on okay don't let it stop you thank you and, Rob, and if you if you just let me just to add it to dr conco's statement just one fact okay and that's statistics and being the leader of research activities at ubis i have to <laughs> to demonstrate some knowledge of statistics 80 percent over 80 percent of users of english are non-native speakers that's it guys the majority of those of us using english you know for publication for academic studies you know for research are uh, people speaking many more other languages than just English. So we do have rights to be wrong. We do have rights, you know, maybe sometimes to hire an editor to help us a little bit with, or just a good friend. But anyhow, we all, every, 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 well, 80% of us, we face this problem that English is not necessarily our first language and there are ways to cope with that. So that's for sure. Thank you. And last but not least, if we can, uh, let's go over this one quick. Support throughout the program. How will I work with my dissertation supervisor? Um, Dr. Tony, do you want, how about you want to take this one, right? Raphael, I believe I have already mentioned, right? Because okay. we believe that that's one of those four pillars of our DBA program. And what I find because of our connections, again, we have a lot of wonderful people, wonderful professors in our uh, pipeline in our you know pool of advisors, research advisors. That's why we have the luxury of being able to choose an advisor, advisor not only based on the research area, but also on the personal traits uh, of the, the supervisee and the supervisor or rather research advisor. So we pay particular attention to that. Uh, again, there is a special uh, so-called Moodle office of the advisor where the students get in touch, submit their uh, written papers, um, get the feedback, collect the feedback. So everything is online. That's the online platform, extremely convenient that you can drop your drafts, final pieces, and then collect them when you need to assemble the final piece, the final dissertation. So we provide this all. And we have wonderful, and we have wonderful faculty members you know, who are going to assist you with all this. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to our student Q&A. However, I see if we can please ensure that everyone is on mute, please. Um, all right, let's go ahead and again, I can go into our student Q&A. So the first question, the one of our uh, first question in our frequently asked question session is, Time constraints, how to fit it all in. So who I got our students to take this one. I know everyone have a very busy schedule. Um, Shane, would you like to take this one? That's probably the worst question to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an expert in this field. I, I, I will say, I will say, however, that um, I found the, the the support team and the professors and lecturers very understanding. Everyone on this in these courses are busy. There's some impressive executives and stuff on this course in this program. It, it's it's a real world challenge, but um, we, we, you find a way, you find a way because we're all ambitious. We wanna get this done. Um, it's not about just you know pushing a deadline and trying to get a, a, a new degree in your hand. It's, it's, it's the journey and what you learn along the way. You, you find a way, I know it seems daunting and we only get busy at work, but you, you you find a way to do it and the support structure to assist you to get there is phenomenal. So as, as challenging as this has been for me, I found it's worked for me too. And there's a work call right now, which I've just rejected, but um, you, you find a way. I think that's the key message and the team is there to help you make that happen. Thank you, Shane. All right, let's talk about interaction. How interactive is the program? Uh, Shelter, would you like to take this one? Yeah, um, Ralph, of course, um, just to add a little bit on the tax constraints, um, I just want to say that it's important for individuals to make a schedule, uh, to make personal schedules. Some people are able to study after work in the evening, some are able to study early in the morning. So you have to make a schedule. I make a schedule to study at least every day, four hours with my, with my uh, DBA course after work, 
or early in the morning. If I'm able to get it in the morning, then I get it uh, late night. And then that's how you should be able to come by your books every day. Once you, start, you sign up to do this course every day, there should never be a single day that you will not be able to any, uh, open your books. Now it's very interactive because um, nevertheless, it's a, an online program. Uh, after a year and a half, getting to two years, I have become kind of uh, attached to the uh, uh, camera or to the screen of my my laptop. And anytime I kind of open it, I see that I have human beings that I'm speaking to. For example, uh, you will find Dr. Santolova uh, talking to you directly, asking you questions on the spot. You have to answer the questions on the spot to Dr. Santolova. So it makes it very um, interactive. You also find uh, 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 the faculty asking you questions. You have to get prepared before you come to the class or some, uh, otherwise you will find yourself uh, behind the class. And so uh, it is important. If you have any challenges with uh, your studies, it's an, there is a program or there is an opportunity for you during the class to you know, discuss this with your uh, supervisor. So the interactive part of the program makes it very uh, exciting. Uh, and you get to know uh, your, your colleagues who probably have various, uh, maybe different backgrounds from yours. And then you, you share ideas. Uh, in our time, we have um, a WhatsApp program. Uh, we have a WhatsApp page for all the students. So you have the opportunity to share uh, some of the literature that you have or some of the information that you can share with your friends. So we are, it's important for us to have a, a WhatsApp program. And so a WhatsApp platform for which uh, we communicate information among ourselves from the faculty to the students and all of that. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Shelter. Oh, hey, Sue meetings and interaction and learning in Sue meetings. Jen, would you like to take this one? Yeah, yeah, bro, I'm good. Yes, um, yes, Zoom meetings. I, they actually don't feel like that. So I'm struggling with this question because it really, I mean, if like Shelter mentioned, it really feels like I'm seeing you all every day and we look forward to it. And there's just one thing about the Zoom meetings is always, it's, it's always a pleasure to see everyone. After a hard week, we all come together. We have our classes mostly on weekends, so it works well for us. And then um, we kind of share ideas and everything. And it's not just strict academics, it's also learning about our various lives and everything else that comes with doing this program. So the support is real and we look forward to it all the time. So it doesn't even feel like Zoom meetings, yeah. Thank you. Oh, hey, um, like on, on that same topic, uh, interaction with classmates and is there a help? Oscar, would you like to take this one? Hey, sure. I think Noor wanted to say something. Uh, oh, I'll leave the... Oh, sorry. I didn't... Noor, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't see you. Yes. It's fine, really. It's fine. I just wanted to um, add something concerning the learn and Zoom meetings. It's a point that I've noticed in, in Yuba specifically, because I have taken some courses in, in a different university throughout the um, uh, for, for, for another side project I've been doing and uh, throughout the COVID area. And the, the main difference that I've noticed in Yuba's learning experience with Zoom is that we always prepare a reading material ahead of the of the session time. But when it comes to the session time, we don't just reread the material that we've had at hand in our books. We actually discuss it and project each and everyone's own personal, not really not personal, but professional, but from different perspective point of view. So when I'm in the Zoom meeting, I'm not there to reread the material. I'm there to listen to Jen's point of view or Jen's experience or Oscar experience or shelter's experience and maybe project my experience so the learning the, the real learning that is beyond the books and beyond the theory actually happens in the zoom session so that's just my two cents on it thank you Noor. that's very well taken thank you oh hey um so actually Noor and oscar do you want to take uh the next question again uh, do i interact with classmates and is there help in the i i, I feel like you guys are covered it but is there anything that you guys want to add and, and it also Jen has her hand up. Jen, why don't we start with you? Okay, so I have a story, interactions with classmates. So I recently, um, I, I, I mean, my husband traveled and got stuck in Qatar. So he got stuck because he had left his passport for the very first time in his life 
in the pocket seat of the um, I mean, you know, in the airplane, the, the, right yeah. in front of him. And then he called in the middle of the night. He says, babe, I'm stuck in the airport. I can't, I, I, it looks like I have to come back to Ghana. I'm like, what? And so this is us trying to figure out what to do about the situation. And I remembered, oh, I have Sasha in my class. And Sasha is one of the VPs for Qatar Airways. So I quickly call Sasha. I'm like, Sasha, I need your help. My husband is stuck. So long story short, he says, okay, let me get back to you. Let me find what's happening. And it was a drug. I mean, they were, the airport authorities weren't helping. Everything was a drug. And then they said to us, okay, the plane is going back to Nigeria. And so we needed a contact in Nigeria. And I called Fortune, who is also in my class. And I said, Fortune, looks like my, my, my husband has an issue. His stuff is stuck in the plane and it's going back. And, and so Fortune makes his arrangements mysteriously. And he says, okay, when a plane lands in Nigeria, someone will be there to go check if his passport is in the plane. I said, okay. In the next five hours, I was just waiting. And then Sasha reaches out, says, Jen, have you heard anything? I said, no. And then my husband calls and says, babe, I have my passport. And so, and this is my husband who is always like, oh, why do you have to be in school at this season and all that? And he says, you really need to be in Ubis because it, it was breathtaking. I, I just couldn't imagine myself being in another situation. And with this, it, it kind of made it sense, you know? So the networking is great amongst the classmates if you utilize it. So that's my story there. <laughs> no, it, yeah, yeah, you couldn't say it better, Jen. That's, that's, that's a great story. Thank you. Um, Let's talk about dissertation topic. What if I haven't decided on my dissertation topic? How can I begin without it? Um, I'll, I'll leave this one open to anyone. Does anyone want to answer this one? Ref, can I maybe say that sure. it, it's, it's okay? Um, because I found that in the classes, some people know exactly what they want to research. And many of us, including myself, are still trying to figure that out. And I have narrowed it down by virtue of interactions with the doctors and professors and the, the, the phenomenally interesting classes we've had in the colloquia and so forth. I've narrowed it down, but I've also noticed that, again, it's a journey and my, my path kind of veers and sways a little bit as I'm trying to narrow down and drill down to what that will be. So I would say, firstly, I've accepted that it's okay to not know exactly what that is because it may morph and change a little bit and, and you will get there and uh, the, the team will help us all get there. So uh, I don't think it's a problem if you're not 100% confident on what that topic is right now. Um, I'd like to take this one also. And sometimes life happens. Um, I was starting my doctoral program at St. John's University in 2009. And I was very sure I was going to do in education, I was going to do um, learning styles because my then advisor was uh, a doyen, an, an incredible researcher in learning styles, wrote 100,000 books on learning styles and exaggerating. Then something happened in 2010, she passed away. So I was left without a topic or a dissertation topic or even an advisor. And I hope this never happens to any of us ever again, but if life does happen, we change our course. And exactly like Shane mentioned, we have to keep an open mind and something somewhere comes along. So I moved from learning styles to competency-based education. So the thing that I'm trying to tell you is that don't get intimidated by the fact that you don't know what you want to do. Something somewhere will you turn a corner and something will come up and you'll say, wait a minute, I want to know more about this. I'm going to do research on that. So keep going. The only thing I want to tell you is that the DBA is, I always mention this, the DBA is a marathon, not a sprint. Just keep going. The 26 miles will be there. You will see the finish line. Just keep going. Do not stop. And that's the most important thing you can ever take away from any of our experiences. Just keep going. As you remember, I don't know whether you saw that uh, movie called Finding Nemo and there's little fish that the blue fish keeps <laughs> saying, just keep swimming. That's exactly what I want to tell you. Just keep swimming. That's all. All right. Thank you, Dr. Shanti. All right. Hey, thank you everyone for the student Q&A. Let's go ahead and move on to the next slide, please. All right, so now let's talk about additional questions. We had an opportunity to have our faculty answer questions, our students answer some of our frequently asked questions, but is there any, something or uh, that we didn't cover? Now is your opportunity to go ahead and please ask. So by all means, you can raise your hand uh, through Zoom or you can utilize the chat box. And let's get go ahead and get started with the additional questions and Q&A. So do we have... Raphael, yeah. would, you, Raphael would you be kind to stop sharing that we could see more people on the call? Sure. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, Bo, can we stop sharing real quick? Oh, I, I believe we have. We have. Okay, great. So, Better. all right. So let's let's see. Do we have any questions? Uh, I am looking at my Brady Bunch squares to see if I see a hand. And if any, I don't see any so far. On... I think I think maybe Carlos Pinon can introduce briefly himself and ask something. Carlos, do you feel like that? Yeah, for sure. Hi, Dr. Santaloa. Hi, everyone. I'm part of the admission uh, committee, and I'm happy to see you, see you soon here in in the university. Uh, and well, very good activity up to now. Everything has been uh, very smoothly, and everything has been uh, very explained. So anything that you need from us, just let us know. We will be supporting you in, in the admission process. Thank you, Carlos. So Carlos is one of the team and guys, whenever you have any question, right? So those are people that, you know, are ready to reply, to respond any day of the time and night. And I know that. Thank you. What about the prospective students? So Cara Holmes, would you like to say something? Cara. Cara's ad, Cara admission student. So. Oh, I'm <laughs> to, oh, so sorry. We need students, guys. Don't be shy. I know Not we had I know we had covered a lot, but are there any questions? Yeah, and, yeah. I think we were very thorough. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We covered everything. Um, I don't know, Najat. Najat, would you like to say something? Ask. So actually, Najat is very close to to me and Stuart. So he he is in London now, London, UK. Nadia, do you have any, any question unanswered? Doesn't seem so. You're okay. mute. <laughs> oh, go ahead. No, Nashad is mute. Okay. No, it doesn't seem like we have any questions. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, hi, hi. <laughs> this, this is Najat Alamdar from London. Uh, no, I, th I think you... Uh, but uh, thanking, uh, I'm thanking you to be participants in this uh, session. I am very happy to join you in this uh, on this level. Uh, it's my second uh, uh, interview with you, and uh, I'm I have uh, uh, some question, but it's only administration wise. I will be asking uh, later on, Miss uh, Sarbina, and uh, the rest of the question which I had in my mind, it uh, you all answered. I and uh, very. Great. Nicely and thoroughly, and uh, you, uh, the 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 question which also my weak area of, uh, with the dissertation, I would like to uh, work as a group on the dissertation of when it comes to the second part of the session. Is it possible? That's all I had. I mean, like a group, uh, creating two three people working together. Not on same same subtopic, of course. Not on same topic. Maybe similar topics we have, and uh, for uh, dissertation. Nadia, thank you very much. That's a very relevant question. Good one. So yes, absolutely. Over these first half of the one year and a half, the first half of the program, right? So we are helping you. We're assisting you, and we actually form the groups of students dealing with the similar research interests, okay, or research yeah. area. And the idea is that after that, when you continue the second part of the program, when you continue working with your research advisor, you also get in touch with those people dealing with a similar problem. And again, you know, WhatsApp, group yeah. chat, and you know, again, you can use Zoom sessions for that, our Moodle platform for that. Most of you, you would be with the same advisor very often, up to four um, people per advisor. So oh, yes, okay. you will have such an opportunity for sure because knowledge yeah. is born through communication and through interaction and cooperation. Yeah, and, also, and also, I know that our computer has got uh, Grammarly, but uh, is there any person or uh, anybody can do the proofreading for our dissertation when we write or, uh, or, the, or the supervisor do that? I mean, as you said, the research as uh, research advisor do that for Nadia, us. Not a single university does proofreading. 
we 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 don't do that but we assisted in in the process so we are thinking about organizing seminars of like an english academic writing and you know things like that but no proofreading is up to the students yeah uh, uh, like editing proofreading yes. yeah but again actually students they can cooperate that's what we did you know at, 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 at Oxford for instance so I read your paper and Najat you read my paper or you can cooperate with Henry so Henry will read your paper and you will read Henry's paper and, uh, okay. yeah that's, so that's I, yeah, yeah. yeah like that's another group, opportunity uh, Mm -hmm. And uh, we will have a group chat anyway. That was my question Absolutely. you mentioned. That. Absolutely not, chat. Yeah. Yeah, and, and if yeah. I can jump in on this one, I think the biggest thing is, um, as I was mentioning before, is humanizing the experience and the interaction, just like Jen said, and some of our other students, um, you definitely get uh, to network, share ideas, discussions, and point of views amongst everyone. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, so uh, is you. there... Absolutely. Thank you, Nadja, for the questions. Is there Thank any you. other question? I know we're a little bit um, um, over uh, our time today, but I want to make sure um, if there are any other questions. But since I don't see one, uh, Bo, can we go ahead and let's go back to the presentation as we are about to end, guys, but we just want, I just want to go over next steps. So our next steps in the process uh, today, number one is to attend orientation. Um, the admissions team will be uh, scheduling and, and personally letting you know when orientation is should be in the next in the next week, uh, the next couple of weeks or so. Um, it will be an absolutely great opportunity to meet more of the of the UBA staff and get more in depth when it comes to our platforms, credentials, et cetera, et cetera. It is extremely important um, to complete your final admissions requirements in order to receive your personalized dissertation handbook, your UBIS credentials, which consists of the learning management system, learn credentials, EBSCO, which is our library, um, Boodle, uh, which is our LMS, um, username and password, your final acceptance letter, course mapping, and most important, just like there, like Queen Elizabeth, your US University ID. So again, the admissions team will be reaching out to you to ensure that is there anything missing that you completed? Please let's do it uh, ahead of time and let's not wait until the last minute. Um, that thing we want to do. Uh, but obviously we are here to help you, support you and embrace you in this journey. So well, by all means, let's communicate with one another and complete all your final admissions requirements. Uh, on that note, next slide, please. I believe that's it. So thank you so much, everyone. We hope to see you in the next pictures here in one of our in-person events or through Zoom or an excursion or a graduation. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time today. It has been a pleasure. Uh, welcome to the team. Welcome to UBIS. Uh, please enjoy your weekend. Again, a reminder, complete your admissions requirement. And thank you so much for uh, spending this last hour and 16 minutes with us. Thank you, everyone, um, and enjoy your weekend again. Thank you thank so much. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Have a nice one, thank everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank